In this video, we're going to compare Nicholas Cruz to Harold Unruh. Who is Harold Unruh, you ask? Well, according to the Smithsonian Institute, Harold was the first mass shooter ever recorded in American history. That happened back in 1946. How could that possibly be similar to what Nicholas Cruz did in 2018, almost 72 years later? Well, let's take a deep dive into these cases. Perhaps we'll be able to find a connection and maybe possibly a solution to stop this type of thing from happening again. Hello, I'm Janine and you're watching Now You Know. Nicholas was a troubled youth right from the start. He was adopted at a very young age, and shortly after his adoption, his father passed away, leaving his mother to raise him on her own. Nicholas would fight her on a daily basis. Neighbors said cops were at the house at least once a week. On top of the things going on in the house, it was reported that Nicholas would walk around the neighborhood with a BB gun, killing chickens, squirrels, and other small animals. This only put more added stress on his poor mother and she was forced to lock up his gun and punish him by taking away his Xbox. In retaliation, he would hit her and call her horrible names. He even knocked out her teeth during one of these altercations. Nicholas had the same type of issues in school, causing disturbances in the classroom, threatening his teachers, and constantly getting into fights. Nicholas eventually got onto social media, where he would post about how he fantasized about killing others. Many calls to law enforcement were made, but every time the call was either pushed on to someone else or it was ignored altogether. All the while, Nicholas was building an arsenal and no one stopped him. On February 14, 2018, he walked into Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School and took the lives of 14 students and three faculty members. At the time of the making of this video, his sentencing is on trial. It is underway to be determined if he'll be giving the death sentence or life in prison. Nicholas was 19 years old at the time of the shooting. Howard was 28 when he took his walk of death. Howard served in World War II and returned home in 1945. His family said that his time in the service changed him, causing him to be nervous and paranoid all the time. He started complaining that the world and everyone in it was against him. He failed at college, he struggled to hold down a job, and was completely dependent on his mother at the age of 28. On top of all that, Harold was also gay, and in 1949, that wasn't as acceptable as it is now. The backlash he would receive from others and his complete paranoia of everything else caused Harold to become enraged with everyday regular occurrences. Every time somebody crossed him in a negative way, he would write down their name along with whatever it was that they did to him. Whenever his neighbor complained that he listened to the radio too loud, he wrote their names down. He wrote down about the barber who dropped dirt in a vacant yard that caused the drainage to flood Howard's cellar. He even took note of the little boy who tapped into his electricity to be able to sell Christmas trees on the street. It didn't take long at all for Harold to build a list of people he wanted to seek revenge on. Now it's here that I want to point out that when Harold was in the service, whenever he had taken the life, he wrote down the incident describing in detail everything he could about the person he shot and what had happened. This was not required of him. He did it for his own record. On November 5th, he was on his way to the movies for a date, but unfortunately he got stuck in traffic. By the time he was able to get to the theater, his date left, thinking Harold had stood him up. Harold miserably stayed at the theater until 3 a.m., watching the movies repeatedly on screen by himself. And it was there that he decided he would go on a killing spree and take the lives of everyone he felt had ruined his life. There are conflicting reports of what happened the following morning between Harold and his mother. Some sources state that they had breakfast together and she left to go visit a friend. Another source states that Harold planned on killing her and they got into a fight where he had threatened to kill her and she stormed out of the house before he was ready to enact his plan. Howard purposely waited until all of the shops were open and all of his intended targets were where they were supposed to be. At 9.20 a.m., Harold armed himself with a Luger and filled his pockets with ammo. He walked out of his apartment, and the first thing he saw was a bread truck. He shot at the driver, but the man was able to escape unharmed. He then went for the shoemaker shop and shot the cobbler in the chest. Then off to the barber's, where he shot and killed the barber, along with the poor six-year-old child who was getting his hair cut for his first day of school. 
Upon leaving the barbershop, he came across an unnamed boy in the street and shot him. Then on to the pharmacy that was owned by his annoying neighbors, who complained about the radio. When Harold arrived, there was a random gentleman that was walking out the door. Harold politely said, excuse me, but the man did not move out of his way fast enough. Harold shot him down and then stepped over his body to enter the pharmacy. He then took the life of the pharmacist's wife and mother. A few moments later, Harold found the pharmacist attempting to call police, and he shot and killed him as well. When he exited the pharmacy, he started making his way across the street. That is where he took the lives of four motorists who had no idea who he was and had never met him before. They just seemed to be in the wrong place at the wrong time. After that, he was off to the tailor shop, where he found the wife of the tailor, and he shot and killed her along with her three-year-old son. The police were on their way by now, and Harold knew that his time was limited, so he attempted to get back to his apartment, but to do so, he took a shortcut through someone's house. That is where he stumbled upon a mother and her 16-year-old son, and he took their lives as well. Now back in his apartment, police had him surrounded. They showered the apartment with bullets, but none were able to take Howard's life. During the firefight, a newspaper reporter called Harold, and he actually answered the phone. They didn't have a very long conversation. The reporter asked him how many people he had killed, and his response was, I don't know yet, I haven't counted them, but it looks like a pretty good score. The reporter then asked him, why are you killing people? And he responded with, I don't know. At that point, Harold had to end the call because the police started to throw in tear gas, causing him to eventually surrender. One very angry cop screamed at him as he was being patted down and cuffed. What's the matter with you? Are you a psycho? Harold flatly replied, I'm no psycho. I have a good mind. When everything was said and done, Howard took the lives of 13 innocent people and wounded three more. Now, why did Harold do these things? And how is this related to the actions of Nicholas Cruz? Well, let's compare them, shall we? Howard stated that he felt alone in the world. He wasn't able to connect with people, and he needed to pretend to be something he was not. Nicholas felt like an outsider as well. Before his attack, he recorded himself, stating many times that no one knew who he was, and he felt that he needed to kill people to get attention. Now let's compare their history. Howard fought people in a war, and he was trained to kill. The list of people he killed at war was, in my opinion, a score sheet. Perhaps it was the war that desensitized him to the value of human life. But Nicholas was never at war, and there's nothing that we know of that could have altered his perceptions except for, well, video games? I know what some of you are going to say. I played those games and I didn't go out and kill people. Yes, I know. I played them too. But I also know that when playing a racing game, like Mario Kart, for example, we all would lean into a turn as if we're actually sitting in the cart rather than on our couch. There have been many studies done on game transfer phenomena, and it has been proven to be a real thing. Some people are more affected than others. I'm not saying that violent video games caused Nicholas to do what he did. I do feel, though, that games could have played a role in desensitizing Nicholas as to the value of human life the same way Howard was desensitized to it during the war. Of course, I'm not a psychiatrist, and this is my own perception of things, but Nicholas's own psychologist did say that he was using video games as a way to relieve his anger and frustrations. So if killing avatars in a video game made him feel better, don't you think it is possible that he came to the conclusion that killing people in real life would also make him feel better? I would like to compare the mental health between Howard and Nicholas, but unfortunately with Howard being diagnosed in the 1940s, it seems they always pin schizophrenia on all people who acted outside the norm, and Nicholas's records have been hidden behind HIPAA. But what we do know about both of them is that they were angry with the world about how their lives were going. Neither one of them had the ability to control their anger, nor did they take responsibility for the failures they encountered in their lives. They always had someone else to blame. The truth is, people who are under stress can snap, and it is the way that they control themselves when the rage hits that matters. So how could these massacres have been prevented? Perhaps if they just didn't have access to firearms, then Howard and Nicholas would have just stayed home and did nothing. I don't think that's the case. I think when people are motivated enough to seek revenge, they would use whatever is at their disposal. Take Julio Gonzalez as an example. On March 25, 1990, 
he got into an argument with his girlfriend at a nightclub in New York. He was thrown out. Julio, in a rage, went to a convenience store and purchased a small amount of gasoline. He returned to the nightclub where he doused the front door. This happened to be the only exit to the nightclub. He then lit it on fire and closed the gate. Within a matter of minutes, 87 people were dead, all because Julio could not control his anger. In my opinion, I think it should be mandatory for schools to offer anger management at a young age. Pre-K, kindergarten, and first grade should be areas where social and behavioral development need to be a priority. Yes, I understand many steps were taken as an attempt to stop bullying in school, but what steps have been taken to help children understand and to deal with the emotions that come with being bullied? If kids are put in a bubble where they are protected from rejection, hate, and other negative impacts, then how will they know how to deal with their emotions when they are finally exposed to it later on in life? Harold's own mother was overprotective of his feelings. The proof of this is when Harold was in the streets firing blindly at anyone who crossed his path, his mother was quoted to say, Oh Harold, oh Harold, they are to blame for this, right before she fainted from the trauma of his own actions. Safe spaces are a nice thought, but really, I think it's causing our children more damage than it is good. No matter how much we try to shield them from negativity, if we continue to ignore the fact that they at some point will need to face it, whether in the workplace or at the end of a relationship or even at failing at anything at all, if we don't give them the tools they need to handle themselves and their emotions, then this type of thing will continue to happen. I truly believe implementing a proactive anger management course not only would reduce mass killings, but it also might help break the cycle of domestic violence issues that were handed down from one generation to the next. If you agree or disagree with me on this, please let me know in the comments. I didn't intend to go down the rabbit hole here, but it is my true feelings about things. If you enjoyed the video, please subscribe, and I want to thank you so much for joining me today. Please take care, stay safe, and as always, thanks for listening.